this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving Father in heaven, we come before you this morning, Lord, with hearts overflowing with thanks and praise to you. Thank you, for the Father, for your immeasurable gift of love through your Son, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for leaving the realms of glory to pray to pay for our sin. If, Lord, you had not had such great love for us, we still would be lost, separated from you. Through Jesus, your only begotten Son, Lord, we have new life. We have eternal life. And we give you thanks. Lord, we love you. We adore you. And may every heart be turned toward you this Christmas, Lord. You alone are the reason for the season. May every your light shine through each one of us, Lord today and into the coming year. These things we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior, and coming again, King of glory. Amen. Greetings, New Horizons Baptist Church family. I want to extend blessings of the season to you, joy, love, hope, and peace, and also to extend uh, blessings and greetings to our senior pastor, Dr. Britton, and her mom. And uh, we will lift them to the Lord in prayer as well as many others this morning. Deacon Otis Daniel will lead us to the throne of grace in prayer. And we are. Father and our God, we want to thank you for all that you've done for us. We want to thank you the air that we breathe. We want to thank you for roof over our head and clothes on our back. I pray, Lord Jesus, this afternoon for our church here, New Horizon Baptist Church. You know what is ahead of us. Praise Lord Jesus. I pray for the honor shepherd as you might grant her the wisdom that she needs to be able to lead your people here at New Horizon Baptist Church. I pray, Lord Jesus, as she went back home, you know, to look after her mother. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that our mother is back into our own home, released from the hospital. We want to thank you for that. Now, Lord Jesus, I pray for those who are bereaved at this time. I pray, Lord Jesus, you know, that their loved ones that are left behind. I pray, Lord Jesus, you are God of comfort, that you might be able to comfort their hearts. You know, that one day they're going to be able to see their loved ones again. I pray, Lord Jesus, 
you know, for our civic leaders, you know, the premier, the prime minister, the president of the United States, you know the desire of his side, you know, trying to do what is best for the people of America. I pray, Lord Jesus, for those who try to derail what he tried to achieve for the people. I pray, our Father, you know, that whoever form any weapon that's going to derail what he's trying to do for the people, I pray that their strategy will be in a failure. I pray, Lord Jesus, you know, that, you know, for our Prime Minister also who try to do what is right. There are other people that are trying to, you know, put a roadblock in the way for the people. I pray, Lord Jesus, that, you know, those leaders, you know, who try to do good, you know, that you are God, that you're going to be able to make a way you might be able to speak for those who are surrounding them, giving them the strength, you know, to not to lose hope, you know, that they might be able to carry on the thing that you instruct them to do for the people. I pray, Lord Jesus, for our church here, you know, our Rising Baptist Church, you know how we try to renovate our building you, the difficulty that we're having, you know, like a dry bone, you're asking us if this thing going to be able to live. It's only you, God, that knows. And help us, our Father, those of us that are remain, you know, that will remain faithful to you so that we might be able to build for the next generation of people that are going to come into your house to hear the good news. Now, Lord Jesus, we ask you, Lord Jesus, to go into the corridor of the hospital. You know, be with the patient. You know, pray for the doctors and the nurse, the technicians, as they carry out, you know, their duty in meeting the need of the patient. I pray, Lord Jesus, you are the one that already given them the knowledge you know, so that they might be able to uh, help, you know, the kind of treatment, you know, that the patient would require. I pray, Lord Jesus, the patient there too, you know, might be able to put their trust in you, that you are the one, you know, that instructing those doctors and nurses to carry out their duties. Now, Lord Jesus, I will not forgot, you know, to pray for our senior, who are in nursing home. I pray, Lord Jesus, for those people that are looking after them. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you might be able to guide those workers, you know, the patient that they need, you know, to be able to help, you know, those seniors. I pray, Lord Jesus, knowing that too, one day, we're gonna be able to be old and somebody's gonna come to take care of them. Now, Lord Jesus, Anything that I failed to ask, you know, failed not to grant it. Now, Lord Jesus, I pray for Reverend Scare as you bring the word that you are given to her to deliver to your people. I pray, Lord Jesus, that areas of our life as you preach your word today, you know, that we might be able to have a listening here, you know, to listen what you got to say, that we might be able to apply those words into our own life, you know, that people who seen us, they will see that there's something different, you know, in our life, we might be able to testify that we learn from your son, Jesus Christ. I ask all of this, you know, for the forgiveness of our sins, in the wonderful name of your son, Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. And the text for this morning's message comes from Matthew. I'm reading uh, from chapter 1, verses 18 to 24. 
This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet he did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what was what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not con consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your word, a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Now, Lord, at this time, uh, I pray, Lord, that you would um, help me, Lord, guide me in my tongue, occupy my mind and my heart, and Lord, that I might speak life to your people. Use this word, Lord, this morning uh, for your edification and advancing of your kingdom here on earth. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The message this morning um, I've titled, um, <clears throat> God's Love Changes Everything. So, uh, church family, <clears throat> pardon me, I prepared this message to bring to you on last Sunday, um, the last week of Advent, which was, uh, which is the weeks leading up to Christmas. And uh, usually we reflect on the promises of God during these weeks, the promises of hope, of peace, of joy, and of love. So today, <clears throat> the promise of love that was born into the world in the form of a baby in a manger. Love that changes everything. Now, there is a familiar depiction of this love coming into the world. Um, that, that is the nativity scene, and probably many of us have one set up on our fireplace. I have a little one up here, and, and some of us have some in other places in our homes. Um, but if you notice that surrounded by his mother and his earthly father, there's always a few animals, and there's the shepherds, all of the people and things in the nativity scene are fixed, all eyes are fixed on the baby Jesus. And rightly so, because it is all about his birth. It's a depiction of love coming into the world. So in this particular uh, passage, Mary, this humble peasant girl, was chosen to give birth to the Savior of the world. Today, now we know what giving birth actually at, um, or have, becoming pregnant is a really big deal. Um, there's, there's this new phenomenon now, it's called the gender reveal. I actually happened to see it on um, the Hallmark Christmas Channel. Um, and so what happens is people go to great lengths to announce a, a new birth in their family. Uh, it can be anything from releasing uh, balloons, pink or blue balloons from these fancy covered boxes, uh, to filling up cupcakes inside with pink or, or with pink or blue icing. So we, in this case, you bite into the cupcake and um, the gender of the child is revealed by you know, the blue or pink icing. So birth announcements are a big deal. Jesus' birth announcement, however, surpasses no matter how extravagant these reveals that we see today are, his birth announcement surpasses them all. The Bible tells us that a multitude of heavenly hosts, that's angels, were visibly seen by shepherds shouting for joy over the birth of the Lord. How much is a multitude? How many? But biblical research tells us it's millions, millions rejoicing over the birth of the Lord, praising God. Now, maybe most of us haven't seen any extravagant reveals in this time, you know, over a birth of a new child. Maybe you have. Either way, we can all agree that it does involve a lot of anticipation and a lot of preparation when something new comes into our lives. And it could be a new baby, a, a new home, um, 
but it, there's always, always some preparation to make way for something new. And rightly so. The reason the birth of Jesus is so important is not because his birth happened so long ago, but because not only did his birth bring salvation to the world, but it also significant in that God desires for each of us, what his desire for each of us is that Christ be born within us, each one today. For Christ to be born within us today, for the love of God to be revealed to the world by the way we live. What would happen now if each of us and we're full of expectation and preparation for all that God wants to do in and through us. Now, in this particular text, the Jewish people were given instruction to be prepared. Through the prophet Isaiah, the word says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and, and he will be called and call him Emmanuel. There will be a sign given to God's people that they had not been forgotten. That's what the sign was telling them, even though in their sinful and broken states. Instead, they would see a virgin give birth to a child. They would see the tangible evidence, the tangible love of God coming into the world to save them. So the instructions that were given in Isaiah to be prepared, be ready, is to be ready for the revelation. And what this says to us is, we need to live our lives with expectation that God would come to us. We need to make space in our lives, prepare him room in our hearts. Make room. What are we making room for? We're making room for the birth of a work of God within us. Right now, a work within us, even before it arrives. In the New Testament, we have two different accounts of the birth of Jesus. Matthew and Luke both give us an explanation of the way in which God came to us where, when? Right in the middle of our mess. Because of love. In Luke's story, Luke's gospel, it begins with the angel named Gabriel speaking to this young teenage girl named Mary. The message brought to um, the angel is that Mary brought by the angel is that Mary would conceive a child within her womb whose name would be Jesus. Now Mary is a virgin, we know that. She is engaged, but she's not yet married to Joseph. So this message to her would have been a little difficult to process, a little bit, what? What do you mean I'm going to become pregnant? What do you mean this child, Jesus, will be the son of the Most High, a king who will rule over all things? But what we know is, or at least what we learn is, that when God, when God is ready to do something new, it's almost always going to be a disruption. In a world that is broken and marked by sin, the arrival of love, that's what Jesus is, the arrival of love is disruptive. When God shows up, our lives are disruptive. Disruptive. Mary, this young girl, probably between the ages of 14 and 16, which was normal at, uh, during that culture and at that time, was engaged to be married. She was engaged to a good man, Joseph. He was a carpenter. He was a working up man. So Mary was probably thinking, I will get married and live happily ever after. Not so fast. Mary's life is taking a turn that she could never have expected. As far as she knew, she was about to marry Joseph when suddenly she had been chosen to give birth to the Savior of the world. Disruption. And just imagine how Joseph probably felt. His fiance had become pregnant, and um, the story that she gave him, um, would his friends buy that? You know, Mary says that an angel told her that the baby is from... Is, uh, from the Holy Spirit. For Joseph, this is a disruption for him as well. Who else? King, King Herod, the political power of the day. He was in control of all of Israel. This was a very narcissistic, ruthless man, self-serving. Definitely a disruption for him. Why? 
Because for a baby to come into the world and to be the son of God, the king of kings, this meant that all small k kings had to go. We know that uh, later the king Herod put out an order or, or an edict or an order to get rid of um, and to try to get rid of Jesus. So we know that this was a disruption for him. When God is up to something, when God shows up, things get disrupted. The disruption in Mary's life came because of the promise that God loves his people so much that he would come to live with them through this humble young girl. Now, most of you probably know that I had an experience of disrupt disruption in, a few years ago. And like Mary, I had plans, but God had other plans. And we all have a choice. We can either, when God causes a disruption in our lives, we can either embrace it or we can avoid it. What I do know is that if God uses my obedience or your obedience to influence even only one person in the power of the Holy Spirit, that is treasure stored up in heaven. Now, I don't know how or God wants to disrupt your life or your plans, but you will know where he is prompting you. My hope is that, what, that you would not be afraid and as our children used to sing, let him have control. The point is that when God is ready to do something new, it is almost always disruptive. I believe also that when God is trying to birth something new within us, it will sometimes, probably always feel like maybe confusing, maybe it's a little hard, maybe a little exciting. That would be good. Something inexplainable. Something maybe even we don't have any control over. The question is, though, when God shows up and our lives are disrupted, will we embrace it or will we avoid it, ignore it? If you are or have been in a place where things are happening at rapid fire or you seem confusing or if you're wondering, what? is God doing in this situation? I encourage you to lean in. When I say lean in, I mean through prayer and through the word. And expect the spirit, the spirit of God to birth something new in you. I lean in. I lean. I lean. Did you know that actually... My middle name is Eileen, I-L-E-A-N. And I actually, I was really surprised to know, it was a misspell, but that's what it is. Eileen, into God, into his word, and I lean into prayer. Anytime I experience a disruption, I lean into God, expecting the spirit of God to wash over me. I was and am always overwhelmed with God's love and grace. When you and I lean in, though, we can have, we will discover a deep sense that God was in and with me and you, and that he loves me and he loves you. Keeping it real, though, I also... Uh, Feel, feel and have felt God point out areas in my life where I had not been patient, we had been less than forgiving, or I should say been unforgiving, and areas that I needed to repent. So what did I do? I repented. Yes, it was uncomfortable, but it was also comforting at the same time because God was birthing within me a new stronger passion for him and all the people around me. He met me where I was and my preparation through prayer and his word for his presence paid off. I received his loving presence. Maybe today you are wrestling with a disruption in your own life. I don't know. Maybe it has uh, to do with employment and you're not sure what to do about it. Maybe it's a loss of some kind. 
that's painful. Maybe it's the Holy Spirit prompting or nudging you to surrender to Him. Maybe it's a relationship that has hit a dead end. Maybe it is a need that you see around you and you can't get it off your mind. Disruptions. This may be God's grace and his love bringing out something new in your life. Embrace it. Some of us have spent years avoiding a disruption that God has been trying to use in our lives to birth something new. To birth something new. My prayer today is that we would be people who would not avoid disruption that God uses to help us experience him and start embracing the work that God wants to do within us because he loves us. Like Mary and Joseph in this story, God wants to do something through our lives that will change the world. That change that will change something in us, possibly in our families, in our community, in our church, in the world. But we have to choose how we will respond. This story of, of Jesus' birth through Mary and uh, with Joseph as his earthly father, it was really a what God was using, that God was using them for, to benefit others. And so we should look at Mary's response. Mary asked a fair question. She asked, well, we can read the full, uh, a fuller version in Luke as well. Luke, uh, Luke 1, 34 to 37 gives us some more details. Mary asked a fair question. She says, how will this be? That was her first response. She was a virgin. There was no natural way that God could bring about what, he, what had been promised. In her mind, there can be no new birth because it does not seem humanly possible. And she's right. It's not humanly possible. This is a work of God. But Mary had new birth excuses. And the point is, we all have new birth excuses. We all have reasons why God cannot do a new work in or with us. You may say, there is no way God can save what? My marriage is too far gone. There is no way God could love me. Why? I made too many mistakes. I will never see the relationship with this particular person restored. There's just been too much damage done. Or I will never be able to get on top of my bills. Um, I'm destined to be in debt for the rest of my life. Or I will never get clean and sober. The temptation is too strong. These are all excuses for why we can't experience a new birth. But like Mary, we are pointing out how, from a human perspective, it doesn't make sense for God to be able to do our work in and through us. But look how the angel responded to Mary's response. The angel says, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Essentially, he was saying, you see, Mary, what is impossible with man is possible with God. This is not a work of men. This is a work of God. In and of ourselves, our excuses are correct and valid about why 
this Christmas could not be a fresh start or a new birth in any one of us. In and of ourselves, it is impossible, but through the love of God expressed in his miraculous birth, anything is possible. All things are possible through Christ. Jesus is no ordinary child. Jesus is God, the creator who took on human form. Jesus then comes with power, power for real and long and lasting change in our lives. The birth, birth of Jesus changed the world 2,000 years ago. Jesus' birth is still changing the world today. Because the same Spirit of God that came on Mary is the same Most High Spirit that can overshadow us today. God wants to birth something new within you today. And it is not your ability, your effort, your qualifications, your gender, your lack, your track record, or your status. It's not about any of those things. It's about seeing whatever disruption God has allowed in your life or brought to your life as an opportunity for him to work in and through you and as something to be embraced rather than avoided. I think that we need to pay attention to Mary's eventual response, which is surrender. I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. Mary opens herself up to whatever God wants, whatever God wants to do in her life. All the questions are not answered yet. And it will be the same for us. We don't know all how it's all going to work out exactly. There's a lot yet to be revealed in our situations. But Mary was still willing and she rests in God's love for her and God's love for the world. She says, eventually, and we love this that saying, may your word be fulfilled to me or may it be unto me as you have said. So the point is when we submit to God, his promises can be fulfilled in and through us. So what if, if this were the kind of attitude that we committed to this Christmas? How would our lives be different? The thing is, our submission to God has everything to do, though, with how what we perceive to be our greatest need. Because I listed some things there, but you may say, uh, even the things that you have that God is dis disrupting your life with, um, you, could, you can live with them. You know, under, may, not, may not fully understand what our greatest need is. And our greatest need is, and the greatest need the world has, is the love and grace of God. To work in our lives. Whatever our plans and our schedules this Christmas, I hope that we have not shot and wrapped and, and prepared to exhaustion with little or no time to reflect on God's grace and his love and, and really to enjoy his presence. Some of us may think that the world's greatest need right now is to have an end to the pandemic and surely that would be great. Remember, we're focusing on what you think your greatest need is, if God can do a work in you. Others may think that we, an end to poverty, and sure, for some other diseases, cancer, Alzheimer's, you name it. Uh, those are maybe some of our greatest needs. But God knows that our greatest need is, was, and is to be saved from our sins. We need changed hearts. And so he came in the person of Jesus, a baby born in a manger who grew up with power to heal, power to deliver, power to make changes in our lives. He died on the cross. He rose again, providing salvation to all who believe that he was the Son of God. Your greatest need, my greatest need, man's greatest need is salvation. Why? Because sin corroded our hearts. All the problems that we have in the world is because of man's heart condition. It's because of our heart. All the situations that we have that are uncomfortable and unkind 
are out because of our heart condition. Greed, selfishness, prejudice, hatred, all come from a diseased heart. I'm paraphrasing loosely. Um, the great um, theologian Augustine said, when a person sees himself as the center of the universe, that selfishness, he, his or her needs are more important than anyone else's. And as a matter of fact, the needs of others are no concern to the selfish person. So the love of God through Jesus the Son, the message of Jesus' birth, is meant to usher in a new kingdom, to offer us a new way and a new heart. The new kingdom does not look like the kingdom we have been accustomed to. The kingdom is dedicated to turning the world on its head and healing the broken and rescuing the lost and caring for the marginalized, caring for others. Love is the norm in this new kingdom and it becomes a reality when we receive the love of God for ourselves and offer the love of God to others. Love uh, that can change how we see others who are different than ourselves. Love that changes how we see our spouse, how we see our children, how we see our parents, our siblings, our friends, our family, and yes, even our frenemies, our foes. People all over the world. I'm hearing in my spirit, love train. Everybody, people get on board. People all over the world. Each one of us, uh, each one individual and uni unique. Every person in the entire universe, every person individual and unique, precious to God, and he wants us to love one another. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, love one another, just as I have loved you. You must also love one another. So God's promise to come to live with his people and rescue them was fulfilled in the birth of Jesus, who is Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. Because of his great love, God provided a way for us to have eternal life. The love of God through Jesus' birth changed everything. And finally, the humble young girl, Mary, was willing to take on the disruption that giving birth to the Savior would require. The challenge for us this Christmas season and into the new year is what if we chose to take the posture or the attitude of expectation of preparation for a move of God of recognition of this disruption as an opportunity for God to birth something new and lastly not to make excuses but to embrace it surrender do not be afraid. Yes, there are unknowns in the surrender, but like Mary, you and I can trust and rest in God's love for you and God's love for the world. Remember, God wants Christ to be born in us today and his love to be revealed to the world by the way we live. Working in and through us, the power of God's love changes everything in us, through us, and around us, as he bursts something new in each of us. May he burst something new in you today. Please receive the benediction. Now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.